Um, you know, some yeah. people walk okay. back and forth. Yeah, I do. Okay. I, I'm not going to take very long because I thought those girls, those ladies did such a great job. And I wanted to say as they were talking about how um, they worked with um, people who have addictions, they're kind to them. And that's pretty much what I'm going to talk about today is angry patients and anxious patients. And, you know, like, that's it. That's all it is, but um, I'll go through a few strategies and explain a little bit, and uh, then we can all get out of here. But um, anyway, my name's Kelly McCann, and I am with the um, Patient-Centered Education and Research Institute. We certify patient navigators. We work with large companies that are working in, uh, they work in healthcare, managing certain patient populations and um, we tr help train their folks there. We work um, for, with uh, help various hospitals that want to have their navigators certified. That's what our organization, and we can also train them. So I teach um, the communication one, and what I really liked about those two, do you work with them? Yeah. Okay. Well, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Kelly, and I, you know where I work, but one of the things, one of my first student was worked for ARH up in Eastern Kentucky. And she wanted to be, she'd heard about patient navigation and what they were and how they got certified. <clears throat> so she came down to, we did it online and was educated. The one class that she hated and was so angry about was one I taught and it's called the motivational interview. And if you talk to the public health folks, they love the motivational interview. And I said, so what was wrong with it? And she said, well, my brother, he went to rehab about maybe 10, 20, 30 times, and he died in his late 30s, he OD'd. And she said, the idea that if you say things the right way, that you're going to get somebody, you're, you can say it nice enough, kind enough, whatever, have whatever strategy you want to use, that that will get that person into treatment. You were laughing, right? It doesn't work. So now when I teach it, I start off by saying this, here's a caveat. You love to dance and you go to the broom and you want the broom to dance with you. You can't make a broom dance and you sometimes cannot make an addict get into recovery. And I know as, as no matter how hard they work. So it's my least favorite class to uh, course to teach and I asked a, a nurse that loves it I said you want to take it you can have it you know but anyway okay so this is what I teach how how do I get rid of this talking Kate how do I get rid of that I'll just drag it down okay so here's the problem um, are we living in a mean world does everybody angry do you sort of get that everybody's on a, a thin edge and it doesn't take much to sort of push somebody over. All you have to do is like, you didn't mean to cut them off, but you didn't merge fast enough and they're banging on their horns and all that. Well, try coming into the hospital. We've got a lot of angry uh, people there. Nursing, would you believe it, is one of the most violent healthcare professions. 90% of nurses experience at least one incident of aggressiveness 30% of nurses experience a form of sexual abuse and 40 to 80% of nurses have been verbally abused in, um, in their first year of practice. So it's really, <clears throat> it's, now, how do I get this to go to the next slide? All right. <clears throat> Steve, what am I doing? Wrong. Um, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm using. Not oh, these arrow keys, not working. Mm -mm. It should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not working. Let's try this. I'm not sure. Let's see. Maybe I'll just try. Having problems with sound. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, just click on the screen. Just click on the screen. Mm -hmm. 
Lois, and I can go back previous. Okay, let me see. Uh, okay, last slide. Okay, that was the problem. So um, the next one is, how do we define aggressive communication? I don't have to read this, right? You all know. You know when, does everybody know when somebody's angry? When you were very little and you were lying on the sofa at home and it's four o'clock and mom and dad aren't quite home from, aren't home yet, or mom comes in the door or dad comes in the door without saying a word, you know if he's in a good mood or she's in a good mood or a bad mood, right? How do you know? What'd you say? Oh, it's the nonverbal behavior, right? You look at somebody, it's the way they walk, it's the size, it's whatever. So it's an interpersonal behavior that applies force physically or symbolically in order minimally to dominate and perhaps damage. It's, it's, um, it's um, I don't think people when they're really angry know the damage that they're really doing. So why, um, you've all been in healthcare. How many of you like to wait? You wait, right? Nobody likes to wait. Patients can become angry for many, many reasons and you have to be able to um, work with them. So the, you know, um, we like to say that uh, communication is contagious. If I'm angry and yell at you, what are the odds that you're going to be angry and yell back at me? In a hospital, you might want to do that. You can't. So how do all the nurse? and it's not just nurses, it's anybody that works in a hospital. Why are they, first of all, why are they angry? I mean, you all know if you're sick and you don't know why, and somebody uses the big word cancer, you don't hear anything, right? Your mind is off somewhere and you are convinced you're not going to make it. So, so things like that happen. Uh, people, they don't understand it. Uh, there's a huge thing called health literacy. Um, they, they speak another language or they're from a culture that, you know, doesn't, just doesn't like to go to a hospital. Um, how many of them, uh, I work for a hospital outside of Lexington, try and get those patients to go to UK. They didn't like to go to the big city. They didn't like to find, try to find the hospital. They couldn't find a parking spot. They couldn't find the doctor's office. They're sick in pain and it's a long wait. So there's a lot of reasons that, and we've got a couple more. A lot of them think they didn't get good treatment, right? They didn't, they didn't listen to me. Um, they are, um, and of course, many of them, especially if you've got a very serious illness, you truly are, you're, you're really worried about losing control, just fr frustrated with the illness, the behavior, just everything is bad. I mean, I've heard people, um, I do a lot at UK, I've heard people that have gone to UK to the emergency department and they are really sick and they are in the emergency department for one day, two days, three days before they can find a room for them. So um, it, it's, you know, like you're angry. So um, here's how you identify them. You, you know, you know, without saying anything, you can tell by the tone of their voice, you can tell by the way they walk, you can tell they're difficult, they're stubborn. Uh, if they want, you know, like if um, they don't want to talk to you, you can't get them to talk to you. Um, so the, the other nonverbal cues, their jaws tense, their teeth are clenched, their fist is clenched, they may speak in a loud voice. And again, like um, as I, anger is very contagious. So that's why you have to be careful. So here we are, we're gonna overcome bad patients. And so I'm gonna quickly go through a lot of strategies about managing. You wanna, as the, that young um, lady that is in, in, in recovery said, be kind, just stay, stay calm, um, I think there were a few EMTs in the room also, like especially as an EMT, you know that you've got a lot of chaos when you go pick somebody up, right? And you, you've got to be that, you've got to be that calm, loud voice, you know, in, in, in the dark saying, um, sir, I'm here to help you. We know what's wrong with you. We want to help you. We're going to take you. And you, you tell them step by step, almost like a little child that's very anxious. We're going to do A, B, C, sir. So you've got to be calm. You've got to have respect for the person. You've got to stay focused on the patient's need. And um, 
Uh, if they're really angry, you've just got to resist any urge to defend yourself. You've got to be working with them. So you want to use the appropriate nonverbal behavior. Okay, so if I'm angry, um, if I work in a, in a, at Macy's and I'm angry, you're not going to talk to me, right? You're going to find the next person that's got a smile on your, their face. So you have to use the appropriate nonverbal um, behavior. So you, you have to be sincere. You have to look sincere. You, have to, you can't fake this. You have to really want to help that person. So because you know all the reasons why they're so upset, we've covered that. So you want to make sure that you're going in and you look you look very approachable. Uh, you want to have enough space between yourself and the angry patient. And of course, if they're standing, you want to stand. And if they're sitting, you want to sit. You want to have eye contact, right? But you don't want to stare. Um, the next thing is you want to listen attentively to an, the patient and hear with an open mind what the patient is saying. So you're talking to the patient, you walk in, and I recognize that you're angry, and I'm going to say, what's your name, you, the lady in the blue jacket? Alicia. Alicia. I'm going to say, Alicia, how are you? My name is Miss McCann. I'm here with the hospital. I understand that there's a problem. Can we talk about it? And you're going to say, rah, 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 I wanted to go to the bathroom and nobody's coming. I haven't had anything to eat and all that. So I'm going to say, and this is lesson one for all of you. It doesn't matter what they're angry about. On some level, we've all been there, right? So you, I would say, Alicia, I hear you. If I were in your shoes, I would be angry too. If I had to wait and nobody came and I need to go to the bathroom and I haven't, had, I'd be angry too. But I, I want you to know, I care. This is a good hospital, and we want to help you. So you want, uh, and then this is what you're telling me, all of these things, then I want you to know I hear, and I, am, I want to apologize. I am so sorry that you had to experience this. I wouldn't like it either. So that really takes a lot of uh, air out of the balloon. I mean, it's just amazing. I've been in, in the line at Kroger waiting for my medicine, and I mean, and people are rant, rah, 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 and I'll turn around and I'll say, I hate it too. I'm sure she doesn't like to be, you know, waiting either. So, so you've got to let the patient know you care and then ask them if they uh, need a few minutes to collect, to be alone and collect their thoughts. So it's, it's as simple as that. You want to encourage the patient and tell me exactly what you're angry about. And then, um, and then, and let them know that you hear it. And then present your point of view, which is you want a big apology from the hospital. But we, please, we let us try. We will try to do this better. And and um, I've known managers if they've had to go and clean the bathrooms, they they have done that. Um, certainly here, never try to shut the patient down. Do I need to say that? Does that even have to be there? Never. Don't do that. Let me go next. Okay. So here's the last strategy that's uh, we're going to get into, uh, you know, that's all reaffirming communication. If you ever feel threatened uh, by a patient, you really want to leave the room immediately. So if, if Alicia's yelling at me, I'm going to say, Alicia, I do hear you and I do want to help you, but you know what? This is above my pay grade. I am going to go out and I'm going to go and seek at my uh, the nurse manager, and we'll be back in to talk to you. So I'm going to look at you always, and I'm going to try to be pleasant. But if you're really worried that some it's code silver, you see something really harmful, then we tell them just maintain, be calm, pleasant. I'm coming back, and then you just run like you know, and call code silver. Okay, so. Um, the next one is strategies for dealing with anxious patients. It's pretty much a lot of the same things. Be kind to everybody, you know, and, and, and um, you want to see if you can help. Now, somebody that's ang ang angry um, or anxious, uh, again, it's for many reasons. But, um, you know, it could be as simple as they just don't like to be in a hospital. They're afraid of the white coat. But no matter what the patient is, or you want to 
be able to recognize the symptoms of uh, signs of anxiety. Um, so here we go. But this could be somebody that's also uh, got an addiction uh, and is, uh, you know, uh, needs a fix. They're having trouble concentrating or their minds go blank. They're ir irritable, restless on age, nausea, abdominal distress, heart palpitations, sweating, trembling, shaking. They could almost be going into a full-blown panic attack right from the sounds of it. But um, so I'm going to go to the next slide, but you all know what it is, right? Okay, let's do it. So you all know I've got to stay calm. I've got to let her know I want to listen to her. Um, I, that I hear, see, I sense that she's anxious. And you might say, um, they might say, well, how do you know why, you know, like I'm, I'm anxious and I'm going to say, well, you seem very tense. You seem like you're on edge. Can, let's talk about what you might think is something that's bothering you. Uh, be, you want to build trust. So again, it's the same three things. You want to listen to the person, no matter what they're saying, you want to agree with them. You want to use, you know, paraphrase, say, this is what you're talking about. I hear you want to agree that you wouldn't want to be in that situation. And that you also, you always want to let them know. I've heard people come out when the, when the nurse or the doctor has said, I care and I want to help you. You have a patient for life. And that patient, the doctor gets me, the nurse gets me, they want to help me. And as a nurse or a doctor or anybody that's in the medical community, you have to mean it. And most people that are in that profession, they do mean it. You know, they do care. This is very caring. So now you're going to try and figure out, help them figure out what they're anxious about. But you really, in the meantime, want to make sure the patient's is as uh, comfortable as possible, determine if they have support, and if there's family members and somebody else that maybe she wants to bring her mother, her sister, her friend, whatever, in, in, uh, in with her. Um, so um, you want to, same thing, work to create a climate of warmth, acceptance, trust, never, don't minimize, try to help them always, you know, so that's what, and, and it's as, um, as simple as that, as simple as what the, um, what was her name, the young lady, what, that, Sean, as, as simple as, there, she, you know, like people treat people that are, um, uh, drug addicts or alcoholics or have any of those, they really treat them as always almost like a throwaway paper towel. Uh, but if you're kind to everybody, um, it really will, you'll go a long way. So it's showing somebody um, that maybe for the first time, it's, it's these are the steps to building trust. And when the patient feels that they can trust the doctor or the nurse or whoever it is, they will, um, they'll, you, as I said, you'll have a patient for life. So here's overcoming, we're almost finished. Are we doing good? Are we doing well? We're out of here. I thought about, yeah, three more slides. So um, all patients make ju judgments as soon, as soon as they see you. They have judged, it, you know, they, you don't have to say a word, but they have passed judgment on you. Look at this. 70% of people make a judgment on, on, your, on just, just you walking in the room. So that's why as a healthcare professional, you have got to walk in with being sincere, but with a smile, a smile if you can, or at least look like somebody that wants, you know, you're not scowling and like, I don't want to talk to you. You want to look very approachable. 23% uh, is the tone, only 7% is the words. What do you think about that? You know, it's it's the nonverbal behavior. I mean, we go. I go into Macy's. I'm not going to the the gal that's scowling and frantic and look isn't looks like she's not going to help me. Right? I want to go to somebody that's approachable and will help me. And we they see that truly from our nonverbal behavior. I feel sort of bad because sometimes I put a lot of time and energy into words, you know, writing letters and we're putting a conference together. And I think, you know, it's, it's only 7% counts, but, um, you know, it's, it's more important how uh, we, our attitude and the way we appear. So here's, here's, we went through all of this. 
you can, um, if you want this PowerPoint, I'll be happy to give it to you. You can share it to any of your folks in your organization. Here's how everybody wants to manage angry people. And, um, you know, how many people when they're angry and there's somebody's being very kind, they really feel bad, don't you? When you say to somebody that's very angry, I hear you, I'm so sorry. It's like, wow, you know, they're, they're, everything changes. So, okay, be clear, compassionate, understanding, especially in healthcare, they are really, um, nobody wants, nobody. I don't know anyone who thinks I really want to go to the hospital. I don't care how nice it is, you know, I don't want to go. You want to be clear, compassionate, understanding. Meet them at the, your eye level, sitting or standing. We all know that. Don't stare, but look at them. And then um, introduce yourself, listen to them, acknowledge them, paraphrase. Let me see. Okay. Um, you always want to, you always, always want to be at, at empathy. So if you're really, really tired, I mean, you've had a lot of grumpy patients or people, you know, I mean, it's like you, you, uh, you want to say, oh, grow up, you know, I, but at empathy. If I were in your situation, if I were in pain, I'd be overwhelmed, I'd be challenged. I don't want to wait. And then you can say, agree, no one likes that. And then add, I want to help you. Try at saying that to all of you, I want to help you. I care. I want to help you. I care. The hospital, the doctors and nurses, my staff are great. They want to help you. Be sure to follow through completely on any promises you make in addressing and don't make any promises you can't keep. So, um, and then uh, pretty much that's about it. Any? Okay. Well, angry people are not always wise. Is there uh, any questions? Any questions? You're all great. Thank you. Yeah, if, you don't want to, if you want the presentation, just um, uh, you know, to give to your you know your staff, your nice, kind staff. You know, I'll be happy to share it with you. I appreciate that, okay. and we'll, I hope you can come to some of our future case band I meetings. Will, I, I will be and uh, yeah. we welcome everyone here that's yeah. interested in injury or violence prevention. So thank you. Oh yes. You know, and it's interesting because the organizations that I work with, I mean, this is relatively new, like managing a mass population. So this um, one of the organizations, uh, Humana might say to this group, ah, if you will manage all of our diabetic population, like keep them healthy, so things will happen like the diabetic healthy, whoever their uh, Humana patient will have a number to call and they'll have their you know, put in their sugar levels every day. <clears throat> and then if it's too high, it flies and, and, and a navigator will call them back. So when we're talking, when I'm working with these organizations, because I just said 70% of having a trusting, you want a trusting relationship because you want that patient to be compliant, right? Well, they can't see you, right? Because you're on the phone. So I said, okay, guys, you just thought it, it's all on your tone of voice. Mm -hmm. It's all on your tone of voice. Just be kind and, and people, you know, people can sense that right away. Anyway. Well, I noticed during your presentation, one thing, I, my dad had dementia toward the end. And uh, that was one of the things you had to be very calm. Very kind. And, and just patient with him as he went through that because he'd be very angry. And you, know, and you know what they say, right, in healthcare, like with somebody, the caregiver and the mm -hmm. dementia patient, who really is the patient? Mm -hmm. You know, it's very, very hard to take care of someone like that. Thank you very much. It's a nice day. We can thank you so much. get this out of here. And thanks again.